this study, we were looking to generate protein localization and quantitation maps so that we could track uh, the entire set of proteins in a cell under different conditions and do this in an automated and systematic way using machine learning algorithms. There's a lot of uh, regulation that takes place in the cell um, at the level of changes in protein abundance and localization, but we understand very little about how that occurs. And so we think it's important to take an unbiased genome scale approach to develop methods to look at this so that we can understand the basic underpinnings of cell biology, eukaryotic cell biology. The idea was to combine methods for automated yeast genetics and high throughput microscopy and automated imaging to be able to look at this in vivo and see how all of the proteins change in response to some kind of type of perturbation. One of the novel findings of this paper came from using this ensemble of 60 classifiers uh, and being able to localize proteins into 16 different compartments within the cell. And from that information, we were able to actually find specific examples of proteins that moved around to different compartments upon environmental or genetic perturbations. The major impact here will be a, a resource uh, for eukaryotic cell biologists to be able to go to our website and our database and understand where proteins that they're interested in are localized and how they change in response to various perturbations. The next steps are to build on these abundance localization maps in the model system that we used uh, budding yeast to generate more information about how proteins move around and how they change abundance upon different environmental and genetic changes, but also to use our knowledge of generating these abundance localization maps and flux networks and move to uh, more advanced models like human cells, uh, cancer cells, to understand how proteins are moving at a systems level in cancer cells upon say, uh, treatment with a drug or, or genetic perturbation. So then we can identify vulnerabilities in cancer cells um, in terms of protein movement and localization and protein abundance and start thinking about how uh, to best target those changes.